All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Technical Analysis Warehouse, where we're trying to identify clear and consistent entries and exits for trades to build our portfolio. Um, so I was a little hesitant to do a video this evening um, due to the reason how futures opened up. Um, things have since turned around, so I went ahead and produced this video. Hopefully you guys will see it. Um, I think it'll add some value into this week's trading. So what we kind of saw initially when it opened up was uh, it opened red. And we did see a little bit of action to the upside for the NASDAQ, I think maybe up about 25 points. Um, and then the Nikkei dropped it, uh, maybe 30 or 40 points, um, while the Dow dropped, I think, almost a little over 100 points at one point. Uh, after that, we actually saw the Chinese markets open up and we saw an immediate bullish move back to the upside, two very bullish green candles. So at that point, I was like, okay, let's go ahead and make this video and let's see if we can get some uh, value for you guys this week. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that I try to be different from some of the other YouTube videos. There's so many good ones out there. So um, for you guys to spend a little bit of time with me, I, I very much appreciate it. But what I'm trying to do here is take a big picture, holistic view of what is the market doing and can I get you guys into a trade that could be beneficial? Um, or does it make sense to maybe hold off a day or two to get confirmation? So when we see the futures in the in in basically bearish uh, environment. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do a bullish video on a stock that trades in the NASDAQ. It's going to be fighting resistance basically the whole time. So right now we're green. Did see some good action here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump over there and uh, I'm going to show you a few things that I'm seeing that are pretty significant. So once again, we, we opened up, saw some red, went immediately green upside about 30 points. Uh, the Nikkei dropped, I think, minus 300 points. I'm not sure where it's trading at right now. Uh, the Chinese markets open have these two very, very bullish uh, green candles. So another, here's number one, engulfing bullish candle. And then we jumped over here to a three outside up. So very, very good patterns. Um, immediately went into a basically a flag pattern. Um, and we bounced off that 1288 level and uh, another very bullish engulfing cap uh, candle. And right now we're just we're still struggling to go with that 12.9 level. And you're like, why is 12.9 so significant? I'm going to show you why. 12.9 has been significant for a long time with the NASDAQ. So right now we're there. So let's look at this. So it served as resistance here and it served as resistance here. It did serve as support here. It served as um, res uh, support back here. It served as resistance. Um, and when you start going through here, again, support, 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 resistance, resistance. After you cross that, that resistance becomes support, right? So we have over 10 spots where 12.9 has played a very key role in how the market trades. What happens if we if we lose 12.9 and we lose kind of that uh, 12, 8.50 where we've been trading? Well, 12.7 has been significant once again. Um, you can see right here, uh, we, we dropped below it briefly and regained 12.7. We bounced here off 12.7, and then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven points down there for 12.7. So right now, that's a very strong support, um, which could change. So now that we've kind of broken that flag pattern on the daily, what's next? What I expect is, what I'm hoping anyways, is we make this 12.9 uh, a new support tomorrow. And then we see our work, work our way back up to that 13, which is both going to be a psychological level, but once again, it has served as resistance and support as well. Um, it's been key um, through the, the of how the market kind of jumps around and it's been volatile, um, but it, it has served as resistance and support as, as well. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points just in, uh, you know, let's see, the last month. So very significant. All right, so we've looked at futures. Things are looking good for us tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully things hold overnight. Um, let's go in and look at the NASDAQ chart at a different level here. So I'm gonna jump over. We're gonna go back over TD Ameritrade. Um, it's personally what I trade on. Um, I've been using it for a little bit of over a year, so I'm just used to it. Lots of great tools, lots of free tools out there too you guys could look at. Um, like trading view, for example, if you don't have access to this. All right, so I like these, uh, both these indicators and the moving averages. Um, I'm a big fan of the 920 crossover. If you guys haven't watched my other videos, quickly, the green line is the nine day moving exponential. The red line is a 20 day simple moving average. The 50 is the peach color there. And then the 200 day uh, 
the simple moving average is our yellow line. I then use a TTM squeeze, MACD, and RSI. All right, so what does the NASDAQ look like right now? Um, lots of lines right now, lots of yellow, blues, and greens. What does it mean? I am very interested right now in what we're seeing on the TTM squeeze. All right, so way back when in the March time frame, we saw that huge sell-off, um, COVID-related, obviously. Uh, then we then we started to consolidate. We start seeing these yellow lines, and we see this red dot right here. And what, basically what that is telling us is things are about to squeeze. And we saw several weeks of light blue action with a significant um, upside there. So let's go. We were trading somewhere at 7,400, and we saw an upside all the way to 9,000 almost immediately in, the, in about a week's time frame. From that point on, the squeeze actually didn't really indicate a sell-off necessarily, but definitely some consolidation. But we started working our way up, uh, slow and steady. We did see a nice spike up right around here um, in that mid-August time frame. Big spike led us to some co consolidation, and we reset the pattern. It's cyclical. Stock stock market is just a cyclical market, um, and which is good for us because we can use these indicators um, to, to see how they've worked in previously. All right. So, anyways, no no sense to look at that. You guys are kind of seeing what's happening. Uh, sell offs too big, too big, uh, um, too big moves that uh, are very rewarding. So, anyways, all right. Red dot. Don't see light blue. We're early. Um, let's 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 jump in here real quick. The uh, the nine did cross the twenty, which is kind of interesting because we were on two days of um, selling pressure here. Friday we did see that nice uptick though in the afternoon hours. So that's what I'm. So it's kind of got us to, to finally diverge back to the upside. It's, it tried a few days ago. It failed. Right now, it's showing positive growth. We're below that, which is interesting. I think tomorrow when we open up, I'm hoping we're opening up above that 12.9 time frame once again, and we will regain those as our support. Um, short term, that 13.177 is going to be resistance, um, as well as that 13K um, psychological barrier there. All right, so we've talked about futures. We've talked about the NASDAQ. Things are looking a lot better. Futures are green. Um, we've... We, we're getting stimulus checks now injected in the market. We're going to see people buying things like uh, hopefully Tesla with a new price target of $4,000 from Kathy Woods. That is the very bullish um, um, assessment, which is by 2025, they're expecting it to be to, uh, maybe $4,000. Um, next step below that, I believe, was $2,500. And then the bear, the bear case is uh, $1,500, which is still more than 100% growth in five years. All right, so... First, uh, I'm going to go into NEO since we're talking a little bit about Tesla. So for those of you that haven't charted this or looked at it or even maybe caught on, NEO is tracking Tesla to almost a 97th percentile. So when it goes up a percent or down a percent, NEO is moving with it. They're two separate stocks, two different markets, really. Tesla is overseas in China, but uh, very, very different marketplaces. All right. So let's look, take a look at NEO here. We don't have the 920 crossover of my favorite play. Um, I think we're getting close. I think we'll probably see it tomorrow. Um, if not tomorrow, the next day. Um, so what, what what should we be looking for right now? One is the the indicator uh, for the squeeze isn't firing yet, but it looks like it's getting close. And what's good about NEO is typically when it fires, it is significant. So once again, um, trading at that 47 for time frame, not time frame, price level to $67 in about a week. Huge returns. Um, Right now, we've had this huge market sell-off. It's kind of bond-related. We saw the uh, the ten-year yield go up to about 178 last week. It's down to 166 in futures, I believe. 167. Hopefully, seeing a reversal. Hopefully, this will give some uh, people the confidence to get back in the back in tech because um, uh, the the inflation fears and the interest rates are problematic for growth companies. I think it's blown out a little proportion right now. I think it would it should have been as expected coming out of a uh, a pandemic. With money being injected in the market, but we'll see. We kind of got we kind of have to follow the masses here because that's what's going to move the market. All right, but back to Neo. I think we're a few days out from a TTM squeeze. I'm I'm hoping for it. Um, if we don't get that, things still look good. Uh, we bounced off the RSI here below 30, oversold. We're going back up, showing good strength at 44. MACDs diverge. Squeeze is almost there. So what what, what are we looking for? We are looking for Neo to get over this uh, 4335 level. Um, and then we're, we're going to see a little bit of resistance, maybe at 4420. Very well could open up over both of these tomorrow morning, which would be great. Resistance will be at 5290. Um, after the 9 and 20, get back to the 50, hopefully cross over. 
we could see, um, I think, easily with this stock, um, get back to that 66 um, price level again. After that, whether you're midterm or long term, this stock, um, if you take the Tesla assessments, once again, very different companies, but tracking similar. Um, if Tesla's at 4,000, this puts Neo at over $200. Uh, I think it's actually like 255 or 260. So huge returns. Um, if you're looking at this long term, I'm not doing that personally just because I trade differently. I'm looking for kind of short term, um, weekly, monthly trades here. Um, so once again, take a look at Neo. Tell me what you think. Great company. It's a uh, you know the Chinese Tesla. Great, great product. Expanding um, exponentially. Um, over 7,500 units sold in January, 55 in February due to the holiday. Expecting over 25,000 this quarter. All right, so let's go over staying in the EV market. We're gonna look at QuantumScape. Um, very well could be the leading um, electric vehicle battery producer in the future. They have a uh, some new technology coming out that's going to be very beneficial, not only to the charge time, but how long these cars can actually drive. All right. So when it comes to the indicators here, uh, we do have 920 crossover, which is very beneficial. We did see a pretty significant price action uh, the last couple of days, you know, from the low 50s. We've hit 60. I think we even hit 65. Yep. Uh, 65 there a couple of days ago. So what we're kind of seeing now, I'll zoom in here real quick for you. Um, let me get back over there. Is both the 50 day, which was coming down from that recent spike, is finally starting to curl back up. It looks flat, uh, starting to see an uptick here. Um, the 20 is starting to curl. The nine day is definitely curling, um, which is looking very, very good. So, what can we kind of expect? So, if we can get in this thing, uh, actually, I've, I have an entry around 50. $3, I believe, from a few days ago. Um, got in early before the divergence here, um, but I still definitely it's too late. I think an entry around here um, could definitely net you a quick return back up that 65 level. Uh, go back a little bit, and I think we're going to see maybe some more resistance at that 72 um, level. Um, you can see it not only here, one, two, three, four. Um, you can also kind of see it right here as well. So a little bit of resistance coming up. It's okay. Um, still see some really good returns in a short amount of time. That's what you're looking after. If you're looking for long term, once again, leading battery company here. Um, uh, <laughs> things are very dynamic with some of these growth stocks. So me personally, I'm not looking for long term. I'm looking for good, quick returns. Um, once again, clear and consistent entries and exits. All right. So I'm actually going to change now back to a different market, tech related. But uh, in the AI um, sector a little bit here. So Palantir, um, long story short, is growing exponentially. They have huge government contracts. They are growing in other markets as well. They have uh, contracts with 3M and Rain2 and energy and security and the military. Lots of different applications. So lots of opportunity for growth. I think recently they said they were expecting 30% growth year over year till 2025. Um, this has been setting up for several days. I've actually made a video about it previously. Um, looks like I was a little bit early, but I think things are continuing to set up well. So anyways, we're seeing these red dots. We're seeing the squeeze get very close. But what happened a couple of days ago is the CEO came out and said, hey, you know, I'm not worried about the stock price. I'm worried about the, the stock long term. We're in this for the long run. We're here to be a market player. If you're looking for a short return, go look at a different stock. People took that negatively and we saw the the shares drop a little bit, not significantly, but we did see a little bit of a sell off. To me, that's very bullish. I mean, it shows confidence in the CEO. He knows he's going to be in the market for long term. He's going to be a big player. So anyways, let's look at the chart. TTM setting up. Uh, enough said. Uh, big, big, big price movements when this thing fires, right? Here in a week's time frame, 20, 26 to 45. I don't think we can do it again quite that well due to this resistance right here at 28. But get that entry around 24, maybe looking for an exit around 28, maybe holding some shares for a bigger move past uh, past uh, the 30s into the 40s, definitely. Um, RSI looks good. MACD still looks pretty good as long as it di doesn't diverge back to the downside. Once again, squeeze looks good, guys. All right, so I kind of gave you the trifecta this week, I'm hoping. I'm hoping these give us some really good returns. Um, if you're finding value in these, guys, please like and subscribe to this. And if you guys want 
a stock review or an analysis on one of your stocks, shoot me a message and I can do one of these for you guys. Uh, I'll throw it up on the internet. We can do it personally. I don't care. I can give you quick supports and res resistances on the, the daily, the weekly, or so on and so forth. Um, anyways, I'm a technical trader. This is my technical outlook right now. As long as futures hold and NASDAQs look good this week with the uh, not only the new Tesla price projection, the stimulus being injected in the market, I think we could see some pretty bullish moves this week. Uh, Hopefully the bonds don't move and nothing funny happens. But like I said, like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. I'll find some good trades uh, outside of the trifecta here. Thanks.